We're going to simplify some square roots before we move on to cube roots. So our rule for simplifying is that if you have the square root of a squared, that's equal to the absolute value of a. And the reason that we have the absolute value of a is because, if you recall, the square root has to be the square root of a positive number to be real. So if a is negative, then um, that causes a potential problem. So the square root of a squared is going to equal the absolute value of a. Eventually, we will drop the absolute value assuming that all variables are positive. But here we have the square root of 36 t squared. Well, the square root of 36, and I'm gonna show you this, the square root of 36 times the square root of t squared. Now the square root of 36 is six, and the square root of t squared, by definition, right here, is going to be the absolute value of t. So that's going to equal six times the absolute value of t. Okay, next we have the square root of x plus three quantity squared. So that's the square root of x plus three times x plus three. So what times itself, right? x plus three times x plus three. So the square root, by definition, the square root of a quantity squared is going to be whatever that radicand is without the radical, without the exponent, rather. So I'm going to have by definition here, x plus 3, and not just x plus 3, but x plus 3, all of x plus 3 has to be positive. Now, we're thinking, well, the 3 is already positive, right? But if x is negative 10, negative 10 plus 3 would be negative, so we're just going to put the whole thing in absolute value. Make sure that whatever the result is after we add that three, we're gonna make it positive. The square root of x squared minus eight x plus 16. Believe it or not, this is the same type of problem that we just did right here. So these two are similar, these are similar. The problem with the one on the right is, is not, it's not obvious, so you have to factor it. So x squared minus eight x plus 16, when we factor that, that's x minus four quantity squared. So sometimes we still have to look to factor. Factoring, factoring, factoring. We do it all the time in algebra, all levels of algebra. Now the square root of x minus four quantity squared is going to be the absolute value of x minus four. So just an x minus four, and then we put it in absolute values to make sure it's positive. Let me make sure I highlight that with a highlighter. Just be consistent. And then the square root of x to the sixth, Oof, square root of x to the sixth. This one's a tough one. What times itself is x to the sixth? x cubed times x cubed is x to the sixth, okay? What would that power have to be raised to? Think of it this way too. I wanna rewrite it as a square. So that's gonna be the square root of x cubed squared. So the square root of x cubed squared is just going to be x cubed, and then we're going to put it in absolute value. Now look here at the directions. Assume the radicand is non-negative. Assume the radicand is non-negative. Now we can say that the absolute value symbols are not necessary. So the square root of y squared will be just y. And the square root of 9x squared minus 6x minus 1, well, we need to factor that. That's going to factor to be 3x minus 1 quantity squared. And 3x minus 1 quantity squared in the radical, take the square root of it, and that's just going to be 3x minus 1. Look. No absolute value is necessary. And the square root of a to the 10th, that's the square root of a to the fifth, 
squared, and the square root of a to the fifth squared is just a to the fifth. So in the next video, we'll talk about cube roots.